Okay, and as you see here, the full computer name does not include BenandBrady.com. Okay, so SRV11 is not able to register itself with the uh, DNS server. So in a situation like this, and this often happens, what happened on this particular system was it was joined as a, or joined to another domain previously, and the name, the domain name, was stripped off it when we demoted it from being a domain controller. And this happens a lot in a lab environment where you very frequently are making one computer a domain controller and then running DC promo and demoting that computer from a domain controller back and forth and you lose the, okay, right here, the network identification. So if I click on more, what I can do here is add in the primary DNS suffix of this computer. And for this to work correctly and function within the benandbrady.com domain, that has to be listed here. Okay, so what we want to do change this to benandbrady.com and I'm also going to check this box by doing this anytime we ever change the domain name in the future so if for some reason we change this domain name it's going to change the actual computer's name to reflect that as well okay so when I click OK notice that it adds the okay, suffix on there so now it's srv11.benandbrady.com okay now this will change the only problem we have is this system must be rebooted so we're going to go ahead and let this system reboot And it's going to kick us back over to client one here as it logs off. Okay, so we're back on client one. And let's go take a look back on SRV11 here. So we're going to terminal service out to, I'm sorry, SRV1, server one. Okay, so now we're on the domain controller. Let's see if it registered with DNS already or if we have to wait for it to boot back up. Okay, so I'm going to do a refresh. No, okay. But as the system comes back up and reboots, it should be able to register itself with DNS now. Okay, because it's listing itself within the DNS domain, benandbrady.com. Okay. And secure updates or automatic updates are enabled, so it should register automatically with the DNS server. Okay, so let's go ahead and minimize this for the time being and get back over to client one. And I'm going to stop the video here for a second. Just wait for the... Um, SRV 11 computer to boot back up. Once that's back up and running, we'll continue on from there. Okay, SRV 11 is back up and running. Okay, so we're going to connect over to it from client one here. Okay, so we're going to log on to the domain again. We still have that option. And remember this for a second here because I want to contrast this with what it looks like when we try to log on to server one. Okay, so right here, instead of logging on to this local computer, we're logging on to the domain, administrator with no password. Okay, what we want to look here, look at real quick here is just briefly the primary DNS suffix now and see how that's set. Okay, now that has taken hold, it's srv11.benandbrady.com, so that is indeed set up correctly. Now we're going to disconnect, and I'm going to go back over to the server server one, our DNS server. And this is what I was talking about a second ago. Contrast what you saw previously with what you see now. Okay, here I don't see that I can log on to this local computer. It's not allowed. Can't do that anymore. On a domain controller, you're not allowed to log on using that local database. So I can only log on to the Active Directory domain. Okay, so I log on here. Let's do a refresh. And now dynamically, without us doing a thing, SRV11 was automatically added to the forward lookup zone, benandbrady.com. Okay, I'm going to refresh this one as well. Same thing here. So now we have a PTR, a pointer record for SRV11, 192.168.1.211. So that's good. Okay, because you need to have a host record and a PTR record for any system on your network um, that you're going to want to turn into a second or further on domain controller, third on down the line. Okay, so we'll close this now. And we're going to scoot back over to SRV11. Sorry to keep switching back and forth on you here. But we're just going back over to SRV11 now, which is our current member server that we're going to turn into a domain controller. Okay, so I'm logging on once again, oops, to the domain. Going back to the command prompt. And here I'm going to type in NSLOOKUP. I want to see if we can actually get DNS working properly here. Okay, so it is showing now we're able to communicate with SRV1. 
I'm going to try communicating with client one without typing in the fully qualified domain name. Great, that works. And let's put in our own entry here, see if that's there. Okay, that's all set up too. That's a good sign. Anytime you're trying to add a second or third domain controller, what you really want to do, test NS lookup because your DNS absolutely has to be functioning. If DNS is not functioning correctly, you're going to have a real difficult time getting this system joined as a second domain controller. So I highly recommend that you 